Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, we will do a full comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus and the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. Just to give you a perspective, the S8 Plus was released in 2017, a full year after the S7 Edge, which was released in March 2016. And of course, people are asking questions. There are those who already own an S7 Edge and are asking, shall I upgrade to the S8 Plus? And there are those who are about to buy a Galaxy smartphone and are wondering, shall I get the S8 Plus or the S7 Edge? And then there are people who just want to see a comparison video. In this video, we will do a deep dive and compare every aspect of these two gorgeous smartphones and in the end, summarize the pros and cons to deliver a clear and concise advice on what to do. So let's dive in and start with the build and design. Both the S8 and S7 are absolutely stunning. They have that signature edge-to-edge -edge design with dual curved edges. But personally, I prefer the S8's design over the S7, especially because the physical home button on the front has been removed so as to give us a large and tall display. This design tactic certainly makes the S8 feel like an evolution over the S7 and not just a simple periodic upgrade. And also when the displays are turned on, the S8 feels more majestic, almost like a borderless marvel. The build quality on both phones is nearly identical. We have glass on the front and back with a metal rim that surrounds the outer edges of the phones. Both phones feel like an exceptional product when you hold them in your hands. The one difference is that the S7 uses Gorilla Glass 4 as its glass, while the S8 uses Gorilla Glass 5, which is slightly more durable against drops. But I do not recommend performing a drop test on either one of these phones, and in the minimum, you should get a protective skin. Both phones have IP68 grade water resistance, so you are fully protected against accidental water splashes, you can use them in rain, and even dive into a pool for 30 minutes, and you can go as deep as 1.5 meters without any water damage. The S8 has a USB Type-C port, while the S7 has a micro USB port. They both have single, non-stereo speakers, but the S8 comes with the special AKG-tuned earphones that sound greater than the standard earphones that you get with the S7 Edge. So in this department, I would say that the S8 has a lead in terms of overall beauty and added value because of the included enhanced earphones. In a minute, I will talk more about the display, but first, let me get the processor and memory out of the way. The S7 Edge comes with a Snapdragon 820 processor with 4GB of RAM and 32GB of internal storage to get you started. The S8 Plus offers a powerful Snapdragon 835 processor also with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage to get you started. Both phones offer micro SD expansion so you can add up to 256 gigabytes of extra storage via a micro SD card if required at any given time. The S8 does have more powerful processing and graphics capabilities, and it will give you a more snappy experience both in terms of navigating your smartphone and playing games. I was able to play Modern Combat 5 on the S8 with a buttery smooth frame rate at maximum graphics settings while this was not possible on the S7. S7 was slightly more laggy at graphically intense gameplay moments in Modern Combat 5, which is a very demanding game. Also, when we run the Geekbench tool on these phones, we get a significantly higher score on the multi-core score for these smartphones, but the single core score is almost the same. So just be aware that you do get a performance boost for more intense tasks. But for anything less than the most graphically intense gaming performance, both the S8 and S7 offer quite a smooth and stable experience. Now let's talk about the dimensions. The S8 Plus measures 159.5 millimeters in height. It is 73.4 millimeters wide and 8.1 millimeters thick. It weighs 173 grams. The S7 Edge measures 150.9 millimeters in height. 72.6 millimeters wide and 7.7 millimeters thick. It weighs 157 grams. S7 Edge has an overall smaller form and weighs less, but
but the differences are not that dramatic. What does matter is how both phones actually use the total surface area, which brings us to the display. So let's talk about it. The S7 Edge has a 5.5 inch display with a Quad HD resolution and 534 pixels per inches. Its screen to body ratio is approximately 76%, while the S8 Plus has a 6.2 inch display with a Quad HD Plus resolution and 529 pixels per inches. It has a screen to body ratio of 84%. Now both phones have stunning displays. These are high resolution Super AMOLED displays that produce a rich and vibrant experience. However, the fact is that the S8 gives you more screen, yet has a similar footprint as the S7. So that's a great benefit, as you get to have a better immersion into movies, games, and other media. Additionally, the S8 has some minor improvements to the display, as well as HDR capabilities, which the S7 does not have. We don't have much HDR content to enjoy on mobile devices yet, so I do not consider this a big deal just yet. So I am going to say that the S8's display quality is not too much better than the S7. But the S8 gets a lead because it simply gives you more screen. But if you are looking for a good, vibrant screen with rich colors, both phones deliver. Now, let's talk about the software. This is a category where both phones offer virtually an identical experience. They both run on the latest version of Android, and if you go in and look at these settings and options, everything looks and acts just about the same. Both phones have edge panels, so you can swipe inwards from the sides and get access to the beautiful, customizable, and cool edge panels that can provide app shortcuts, weather widgets, rulers, calculators, news, and more. So really, there's not much to say here it's a virtually identical experience, and it's good stuff. Let's move on and talk about the camera. There isn't much of an upgrade in the camera department. Both cameras are 12 megapixels with an aperture of f1.7. They have optical image stabilization and phase detection autofocus. The S8 offers a minor sensor upgrade that achieves the same raw performance as the S7. Now the S8 does have multi-image processing technology which is software based and delivers slightly better detail and low light performance. But make no mistake, both of these cameras are world class and will satisfy any consumer who is not a photography scientist that nitpicks every little detail. The front camera on the S8 has been upgraded from 5 megapixels to 8 megapixels and it certainly takes more detailed selfies than the S7. And also it can perform autofocus while the S7 has fixed focus. Both phones can record in 4K at 30 frames per second, 1080p at 30 or 60 frames per second, and are capable of super slow motion video shots. As a total package, the camera should not affect anyone's buying choice. Either way, you will get great satisfaction from these world-class cameras. Now let's quickly talk about the battery. The S8 Plus offers 3500 mAh battery, while the S7 Edge offers 3600 mAh battery capacity. But despite these numbers, the S8 Plus pulls ahead in battery life. Expect to get 1 to 2 hours of extra juice with the S8 Plus. Otherwise, both smartphones offer fast wired and fast wireless charging, so they're quite feature rich, but the S8 Plus gets a lead for better battery life performance. Now let's talk about fingerprint and security options. The S8 offers three ways to authenticate yourself. A fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone next to the camera, an iris scanner, and a facial recognition tool. The S7 only offers a fingerprint sensor on the front of the display. The fingerprints are fast and secure, as is the iris scanner on the S8, but the facial recognition tool is a joke. It is not secure at all. A photo of your face can be used to unlock your smartphone. Regardless, the S8 gives more options to the user, but I personally am not a fan of the fingerprint sensor on the rear of the S8, right next to the camera. I prefer it on the front since I like the option of being able to unlock my smartphone as it is laying flat on the table in case I want to use an app really quick without lifting the phone, such as the calculator app. 
Additionally, I also regularly use the fingerprint sensor to use Samsung Pay and log into many apps that support fingerprint authentication, so having it on the front is more convenient and efficient. Now let's talk about pricing. The S7 is always going to be cheaper than the S8, although it's hard to pinpoint a specific price for the S7. I have seen it sold as low as $500. But in comparison, the S8 is currently in the range of $850. It's not a bad idea to own an S7 at $500 price point over the S8 if budget is an issue. All right, so we have looked at everything. Let's draw a conclusion. So first, let's list all the major changes of the Galaxy S8 over the S7. The S8 has a larger 6.2 inch display, yet it has a similar footprint as the S7. It has faster processing and graphics performance, which makes a difference in high-end gaming apps. On the S8, with the elimination of the front home button, the design of the S8 feels evolutionary instead of some gimmick. S8 comes with high-end AKG-tuned earphones in the box. S8 has an iris scanner. And guys, that's basically it. A better design, larger screen, and a few other perks is really the only upgrade you will receive from the S8 coming from an S7. Now let's see what's virtually the same in both of these phones. The S8 and S7 have a camera setup that's not so wide apart. The Super AMOLED display on both phones is rich and vibrant. They are equally water resistant with a grade of IP68. They both have a great build quality and they have a virtually identical software experience. So let's see, the big question, is there any need to upgrade from the S7 to S8? Not at all, especially if you are currently satisfied with the display size of the S7. Remember, no one ever said that the S7 Edge display is a small display. Additionally, one of the biggest incentives these days for upgrades is a better camera and S8 really doesn't give you much of an upgrade in that department. And one of the most important categories, such as the software, is virtually identical. So an upgrade might not be as beneficial as you think. But what if you're in the market to make a decision between the S7 and S8? Then you're better off just going with the latest gadget for maximum satisfaction. As long as you understand that S8 will cost you $250 to $350 more. If you do go with the S8, you will acquire the best display on the market, one of the largest displays on the market, probably the best looking phone on the market, and also a few perks such as the iris scanner and fancy earphones. So that's the conclusion. Do not upgrade if you already have an S7, but if you own some other non-Samsung smartphone between the S7 and S8, then get the S8. If you have an S6, then do upgrade to an S8 for actually feeling like you did a major upgrade. So drop a comment down below and let me know what was your choice and why. All right, that's the end of this video. Make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come and give this video a thumbs up to show off your love for Galaxy smartphones. And of course, do not forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Saki Tech Online. Have a fantastic day.